everyone is talking about Zoom these days. Like you, I was wondering why this app has suddenly become immensely popular. The answer is simple. A lot of people are suddenly embracing working from home and Zoom works pretty well for video conferencing. Zoom was even popular before the lockdown but now that almost everyone is working remotely, Zoom has gone viral. It is now the number one free app on the Google Play Store. So what exactly happened? What is the Zoom app all about? What are its advanced features? And why is it gaining so much popularity in India? I am going to answer many of such questions in this video so stick around. Before we begin please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit that bell icon so you know when we post a new video. Now let's get started. Zoom is a video calling app that is ideal for large groups because it supports up to 100 users for free. It is widely being used for meetings, online learning and university lectures among other things. The free version of Zoom allows users to enjoy unlimited one-on-one -on -one meetings along with group calls featuring up to 100 participants for 40 minutes. Before you go ahead and download the Zoom app on your computers or phones, you should know that there are a few privacy concerns around this app. If you are about to use Zoom, it is better to use it from a browser on your computer rather than using the service via the app. Of course, the web version has fewer features but it is better to protect your privacy. More on that a bit later, first let's talk about this app and where it is available. You can download and install Zoom on your Android smartphone or your iPhone. It is available for both. In case you want more screen space and viewing options, you can also download the app on your computer via the Zoom website. With that said, you can also use Zoom via Google Chrome or Firefox browsers. If you want to host a Zoom meeting via your smartphone, open the app log in and tap new meeting which is a button on the top left corner select if you wish to keep your video on or off below you'll see a meeting id which you can share with participants to let them join your zoom meeting you can allow people with your meeting id to directly join the room or you can disable this to require a password along with your meeting id to join once this is set tap start a meeting and you are good to go Similarly, if you are a participant, then just ask the host for the meeting ID. Now open the app, tap join, followed by entering the meeting ID on the next page. You'll also need to enter the password if the host has asked for it. Just enter the details and you'll be able to join the meeting. If you are using Zoom on your computer, open the app and log in. Once you are logged in, click on the small bottom facing arrow icon next to the meeting button. Over here, check the options similar to how it's done on the phone. After that is done, click on meeting to start. To join Zoom meetings created by others, open Zoom and click join. Select if you want to share your audio or not. Also choose if you wish to share your video or not and click on join to get started. Lastly, if you're using Zoom on your computer via the browser, you can either access it via Google Chrome or Firefox. To get started, go to the Chrome Web Store and download the Zoom Scheduler extension. Once it is downloaded, the extension will appear at the top right corner of the Chrome browser. Click on the extension and sign in using your credentials. After that, click on Start a Meeting followed by clicking on either Video Off or Video On depending on your preference. This will redirect you to a web page where Zoom will ask you to download its application. Ignore that and select the click here hyperlink to start the meeting. Below it, you'll now see a new hyperlink which says start from your browser. Click on it to finally get started with the meeting. If you're using a Firefox browser, install the Zoom scheduler add-on and click its icon at the top to get started. Similarly, if you want to join a meeting via your computer's browser, just go to the Zoom's website and log into your account. After that, click on join a meeting followed by entering the meeting ID on the next page. 
Zoom will again prompt you to download its desktop app. Ignore that and repeat the steps as I have just told you about setting up a meeting. Once all that is sorted, you'll be able to join the meeting. Zoom has attracted a lot of users, but its popularity has also attracted a lot of trolls. Trolls who zoom bomb video conferencing calls in order to cause disruption. Well, this term zoom bomb means when an uninvited person joins your conference meeting and uses a screen sharing feature to disrupt the call. This happens when a call is public, basically allowing anyone to join and create mischief. You don't want these trolls joining your meeting and showing explicit images, which is a problem many have faced. However, to avoid such kind of a situation, you need to make sure that you don't share your meeting ID in public, such as via social media posts where everyone can see it. Only share your meeting ID with people who need to join your Zoom meeting. After that, follow these steps. If you're using Zoom on an iPhone after starting a meeting, tap more. This is on the bottom right. Now select meeting settings. Now disable the option called allow participants to share. If you're using Zoom on an Android smartphone, start a meeting, then tap more and go to meeting settings. Over here, enable lock share. If you're using Zoom on the web or via the app on your computer, after starting a meeting, open share screens, advanced sharing options, and under who can share, click only host. One of Zoom's feature is to share screen. If you're using the app on the computer, simply click on share screen present in the bottom bar of the meeting window. You'll now get various options here. Under basic, you'll be able to share your complete desktop screen or you can even select an individual application that's open. Additionally, you also get advanced sharing options like only a portion of the screen or certain audio playing on the computer. Now, if you're using this feature on your computer's browser, then you'll be disappointed to know that share screen is pretty basic for the web. Over here, you only get the option to share your entire browser screen or the application window or a specific browser tab. Moving on, if you want to use share screen on your smartphone, simply start a meeting and tap share, which is present in the bottom tab. With this, you'll be able to share your phone screen, share files, documents and more depending on your selection. Apart from sharing screen, if you're using Zoom on your computer, then you also get the ability to record your meetings. This feature doesn't work on the web browser or smartphones. So to start recording Zoom meetings via your computer, simply click the record button present at the bottom of your meeting window and the app will immediately start recording your audio and video. Once the meeting ends, your files will automatically be stored in your computer's local storage. Do note if you are a participant and you wish to do the recording, then you'll need to make sure that you are active via the Zoom app on your computer and also you'll need to ask for the host's permission to let you record. So with all these features, how do you make sure that a meeting goes as smoothly as possible? Say you're hosting a meeting with up to 100 participants, what can you do to avoid chaos? Well, by following a bunch of tips, you might just be able to achieve that as well. If you're hosting a meeting from the Zoom app on your phone, tap on more. You'll now see a bunch of controls here. To make things efficient, you can enable lock meeting as well as mute on entry for participants who are joining in. You can turn on play chime on entry and exit of participants. You can also set allow participants to chat with to host only, which will prevent people from talking to anyone else. You can also stop people from renaming meetings or sharing things in the meeting. Apart from this, from the main meeting window, you can go to participants and set individual permissions for every participant. Apart from getting these features on the desktop app, there's a nifty addition which you don't get to see on the smartphone app. If you go to more, which is present in the bottom right corner, there's an option that allows participants to unmute themselves. If you uncheck this, none of the participants will be able to unmute themselves when they are muted, 
which means you'll have complete control over who speaks when in the meeting. Additionally, you can also go to the meetings tab and mute all the participants at once. By following these easy steps, you'll have mastered the Zoom app in no time. We now know what is Zoom, where it is available and how to use it. Now let's check what all plans are offered if you wish to get the paid subscription. The basic plan is absolutely free which allows up to 100 participants and 40 minutes limit on group meetings. Then comes the pro plan which costs $15 or roughly 1150 rupees per month. In this plan you get all the basic features, up to 100 participants and a meeting duration limit of 24 hours. Next comes the business plan which is priced at $20 or roughly 1530 rupees per month and this includes up to 300 participants and no time limit on meeting durations. Finally the enterprise plan which is also priced $20 but this one can include up to 1000 participants. So that was everything you need to know about Zoom. But the big question is, should you use it? Zoom claims to be end-to-end -end encrypted, but this doesn't seem to be the case. According to a report by The Intercept, Zoom has access to your files and messages shared during meetings which the company can use for ad targeting. Since the company came under scrutiny, it has updated its privacy policy. Now, as long as you make sure everyone in a Zoom meeting connects using computer audio instead of calling in on a phone, the meeting is secured with end-to-end -end encryption, at least according to Zoom. Apart from this, the company has also been accused of leaking email addresses of at least 1000 people with strangers. According to the report by Vice, the issue lies in Zoom's company directory setting which automatically adds other people to a user's list of contacts if they signed up with an email address that shares the same domain. Even on Zoom's website, the company says, by default, your Zoom contacts directory contains internal users in the same organization who are either on the same account or whose email address uses the same domain as yours in the company directory settings. Obviously, this doesn't apply for publicly used domains, which includes gmail.com, yahoo.com, hotmail.com, etc. Separately, the Zoom app for iOS was updated last week after it was found that the app sends data to Facebook even if you don't have a Facebook account. By now, it is clear that while Zoom is great for video calls for large groups, there are several privacy concerns that prevent us from recommending this service wholeheartedly. If you must use Zoom for video conferencing calls, make sure that you use it via web browsers and avoid the apps as much as you can. That's all for this video. This was everything that you need to know about Zoom. If you found it helpful, then please give this video a like and definitely share this video with others. As always, thanks for watching and for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.